there's what they call man mom pages it's more like manual it's more like you have a manual on your share you understand that you can use to learn anything that has to do with programming now the compiler of c program gcc is not it's not like categorically per gcc per se it's like a program that is running on the unix operating system i know bash is a unix operating system mm -hmm. macbook 2 is a unix operating system and i have forgotten the full meaning of unix so now if you do man right if you do which man you see why then i ask you to use which gcc is that on linux every command you are giving to your terminal every command is a program just like you have chrome as a program every command you are running is also a program so what the terminal does is by the time you give it that command the, the shell will now go and find that command and then execute it so why i ask you to do which gcc is that it will give you the location of gcc and the location of gcc once it gives you the location it will mean that it means gcc is installed on your computer yeah. you understand so now i've done which man if you check man is under user folder inside user folder is under bin you call it binary folder all the executable you have on your program on your uh, operating system most especially your linux and the rest all of them are under your binary folder they're under your binary folder so all those ls all those cp mv all all of them are executable if you have to see all of them you just have to do ls slash usr slash bin you see i cannot access it no problem i'll just sudo this will then the model okay but then what i know what to do here so cd let me go back to my home then let me do it ls slash usr slash b good now so are you seeing so all these ones are binaries all these ones are programs all these ones you are seeing they are programs so you see nano it means on my linux nano editor is being installed that's why you are seeing nano do you get it now these are other ones now even your what are they calling it git git is a program too so let me show you yeah I see. Mm -hmm. So Git is a program too. Don't worry. We'll, and if you check, you know Git, you can do Git add, Git commit. Yes. It means Git is a program that takes an argument. Mm -hmm. Git commit, commit is an argument. So we too will make a file using C programming that takes an argument too. So maybe I want to add two numbers together. I will not write the two numbers inside my program. Instead, is when I want to run my file. I will now say, let's say the name of the file is calculator. I will, I will run dot calculator space five space plus space five. Enter. It will give me the answer, which is 10. Just like how you do git add dot. It will add it. Git commit. It will commit it. That's how I will run my own. So all these ones is just, is just time. Like that. So that's. Now, what do I even want to do? Good. So where did I even stop? Uh -huh. So GCC, just like I say, is the interpreter, is the compiler sorry, of C programming. And GCC has four stages. You see that it just the GCC name of your program, you just compile it once, yeah. right? But GCC has four stages. Now, those four stages of GCC, I know they may not be cram book. Because I wrote about it. So you see, normal normal, eh? If you want to go and learn C in all those websites, they will not teach you that compilation process. There are four co compilation process. So just if I is even in their editor, if you are using my school, it's even the editor that you'll be using. 
They will not even teach you how to use all those GCC, yeah. how to use all those editors. They will not teach you. I'm telling you. So, there are four steps of compilation. You see compilation. These are the steps. Preprocessing is being done by the preprocessor. All these ones are inside the GCC compiler. Compiling is done by the compiler. Assembly is done by the assembler. And then linking is done by the linker. Now, by the time you just do GCC name of program, it will run you through all these four steps. And then it will now create an executable. What it means by executable? A program that you can run. So, now, let's look at what each of these four steps do. Now, if you have your source code, just like the code you just wrote now, right? In fact, let's even write another code so that we'll use it for the four processes. So, I think we wrote this code, right? This is the code we wrote, isn't it? Let me include my STDIO. So, we've written this code. This one, let me just turn it to void. Then here, let me say another printf. So, now, back to our browser. You can write any program. Just print F, print anything. Now, what is going to happen? Now, we have our source file. This is our source file. Zero dash hello world dot C. Your source file is just simply any program, any code you write. Uh -huh. just that's what they mean by source file then the first step by the time you now do gcc this file the first step it will go through is preprocessor now let's look at the preprocessor look at the preprocessing which is done by the preprocessor is the first step of this compilation it is simply a program that does the following one it removes comments you know we have not talked about comment already but we all know what comment are in programming language i talked about it last time where i say you is more like i'm documenting your code inside the code in such a way the interpreter compiler will not do anything it will not touch that part of your code okay. it will not consider it as your code uh -huh. so what this preprocessing the first stage does any comment it removes it because comment are not needed in the main program comment are for you that is writing the program so that next week if you come back to your program you not say it's only me and it's only god that understand and you know that joke that say when i wrote this code it was me and god that understand that is only god that understand yeah. good so it's, it's good to document your code so the next one what do you see includes header what files in the source code so if you check our program in fact let me go back to my program let me add a comment to add comment in c you can add multi-line comment using this my first c right this one is multi-line comment what i mean by multi-line this is a multi-line comment then single line comment you can just use i don't even forget single line okay single line is double yeah. so this is single line this is multi-line comment so so what will this preprocessor do it will remove this comment it will remove this comment and uh, number what will the second one do include what header files in the source code where's the header file that we are using this is a header file so what is going to do? You know here we just declare header mm -hmm. stdio.h. What is stdio.h? This stdio.h, the the code that are inside. Now let me bring it. Put it this way. C is not like 
JavaScript. JavaScript, if you say dot uppercase, inside the JavaScript interpreter, you have coded dot uppercase function already. You understand? You know, I would like put it. It's just like I come and say, Emmanuel, I speak my tribe. Like, I, I want to say bring water and I speak my tribe. Will you, will you go and bring the water? No. no, because you don't understand what I say. Imagine I speak it in your own tribe and you understand your tribe. Will you go? Sure. And I speak it in English. Will you go? Yes. So, is that JavaScript that you think you just do, that my name is AY, AY the king, dot uppercase, you run and you see, say, all the small letters, you talk capital letter, you can't feel yourself, say, Busca. There's a place that they coded it. It has been coded somewhere. It does not just come out of the blues. Like, the dot uppercase did not just come out of nowhere. There's somewhere uh, a JavaScript developer actually coded it. That, okay, once you use uh, word dot uppercase is going to return the capital capitalized letter. You understand? So also, this printf that we are using, who is like, how will the C program know that what we want to do once we use printf is going to print it out? So this printf is being coded inside of this stdio.h. So for we to use this printf. We need to bring in the coding, just like your function. You know, there's a place where you do your function. There's a place where you call your function. Imagine you did not do the function, but you call it. Will it work? No. That is what is happening here. So the place where this printf function is being done is stored inside here. So what this preprocessor will do, it will go and check what are we using that is inside here, rising printf. It will go and check inside this. This one is a file, it's a real file. We will learn how to create our own header file. We will be able to create, you see it, we will create our own header file. It will show you very simple. So, this is a real file. Though. So, it will go and check it and fetch this printf function and then include it inside this file. So, the function printf will be there. Then, here will be more like you are now calling the printf function. Just like how you can have your calculator, the addition function inside your code. Then, another place inside your same code, you are now calling the add. To add two numbers together. I don't know if you guys understand. Yes. Hey, are you are you asleep? You see, no eat babe food. No eat babe food. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one now, you say expands or replaces macro name with code. So now for C, they get what they call. There's what they call macro names. What is macro names? It's simple. Let's say. This one is what? This is C gangs. Let's say I want to put this one in plenty places in my program, not just a single place. I want to put it in plenty places in my program, right? So it means that if I'm putting it in plenty places, everywhere I want to use that, I have to be putting this is C gang, this is C gang, this is C gang. Will it make sense? No. So what I will do, I'll just come. Right, I will give it a macro name. How do you give a macro name? You use the keyword define. We we'll still look at macro on its own. Mm -hmm. Then I will let's say um word. Let me use word. Now it's not compulsory to use capital letter, but it's a conventional name. Conventional simply means once a very good C programmer look at your code, once he see this. You know that this is a macro name. Now, define is the keyword to create a macro. The next one will be the name. Then after the name, the next thing you have will be the value of the macro. Another advantage of this macro is that imagine how to code something that finds area of a cycle. Or let's say it finds area of cycle, area of sphere, area of cylinder. You know one thing that is constant is what? Pi. Right? So instead of me, every time I want to find maybe for area of cycle, I'll do pi square. Then the pi, I'll now go and do 22 over 7. Then I want to find that of cylinder, I'll still do 22 over 7. I want to find that. So instead of all those ones, I can just come here and say, let me do this one first. So I'll put this is the C ganks. Then for that one, I will define it again. Define pi. What is my pi? 22 over 7. Or I can say 3.142. So 
So this is the name value. Name value. In this case, you know this is string. I told you for string, you use double quotes. This is integer. For integer, you don't use any quotes at all. So inside this my program, I can now come and say. I can now come and say print f now what is this what is this this is the c gang what do i put as my c gang word so here so instead of this this is c gang now right i'll put word then this one pi I'll still teach you people formatted printing. Print F percentage D new line. We'll still talk about this. Pi. For this one, percentage S new line. Okay, yeah, that slash N is a new line. Good. So slash N is new line. Uh, what I'm, I think we, we treated ASCII code with yes, yes, last yes, yes. week. I will still teach you guys the ASCII code. After that, then S slash N. So. Good. So this slash N, what I'm saying is, after printing, now this is called this is called ordinary printing. This is called formatted printing. What am I saying here? I'm telling it that print a string. Percentage S means to print spring, uh, string. What is the string? The string is word. What is word here? This is C gangs. Here, percentage D means integer. Print an integer. After printing the integer, add a new line. What is the integer? Pi. What is pi? 3.142. So, three things this preprocessor do. It first removes comment. This one here, it will remove it. It's unnecessary. stdio.h. We use printf. Printf is part of stdio.h. It will go and fetch the code of printf from stdio.h come and replace it um macro it will search anywhere it sees word because you have already told it that everywhere you see word the value is this is c gang so anywhere it sees word to come and replace it with this is c gang anywhere it sees pi it will come and replace it with 3.142 so that is what this preprocessing is doing okay so i see is he like compiler bar yes he read the code like this name man is say that void side bar mm. you can go above the defined mm. is he going to read properly or no it's not read properly my own question is this okay this macro name here is is different from variable yes okay macro names must be defined outside of your function Variables can be defined outside. That is a global variable. Yeah. It can be defined inside. That is a local variable. You know, there's global. I'll still talk about that one. I know then they might know. <laughs> Behind two programs, yeah. then you you might know. You understand? You know, we have global, local. Then there's one other one. I forgot it. Anyway, so that's you are talking of scope. So yes. so that is what this preprocess is. Okay. Okay. Like we know. This macro name, no? yes, we do not end it. Uh, you don't need to. You don't need to end it. Mm -mm. Okay. You don't need to. That's why you see, even this, we are not ending with a semicolon. Okay. So I'll be seeing I for that of this. Now, mistake. Okay. Uh, I clean up. And sorry, you say that percentage S missing a okay. string. Yes. Like yes, percentage D missing a integer. integer. So D integer. Yes. No, it is not related to D. I. Mm -hmm. I too. Ja, ja, ja. In I place of percentage D, you can also use percentage I. You yeah, yeah. So we still talk about formatted printing. Everything is step by step. Yeah. And I just want to understand this GCC first. If you any time we press GCC name of program, you understand what is going on. Yeah. 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 You know, so you yeah. JavaScript. It's in local. It's in the Apple. So you will even understand it in the gone. So this is what preprocessing does. So now me. This is what me I actually use as an example. You understand? You see here, what did I use? Percentage F. I forgot. For this 3.142, 3.142 is not an integer. It's a float. Yes. It's a floating point. 
So for you to print float, you need to put percentage F. But since we are using percentage D here, what we have is that you just cut out this part. You just print three. But no problem. We are just doing it for purpose of learning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So now let's look at. Now what do you see? To compile a file to run through only what the preprocessor, the option used is what the flat E. Now anytime you are entering command on your command terminal and you see dash a letter, you don't call it dash E. You call it flag E. F L A G. Yes, sir. So flag E alongside the what GCC command. Here we are using a C source code file named source dash. All these are an illustration. So now what we'll do is that we'll compile our code and we'll compile it to stop just at preprocessor stage. You know that time you just did GCC name of program. Once you do GCC name of program, it will run it through all the four stages. But you can run it each stage and stop so that you observe what is happening. So to just run it through just the first stage, which is the preprocessing, this what to do. GCC flag, capital letter E, the name of your program. So that program now that you wrote, mm -hmm. right? Run the command. I don't know what you named the program, but now what you do, GCC flag capital letter E, then the name of your program. Enter. Now, do you see? Have you run it? Yes. Okay. Plenty things came out, right? Yes. Now let's inspect. This is the name of our program, right? What do you see here? One built in. Command line, command line. So, all these ones. What do you see here? So, do you see where our header file is located? Do you see it? Do you see where our header file is located? I see it. Slash USR, slash include, slash what? So, when you are doing hash, include, STDIO, you see what you are doing? It's more like you are telling it where to go and find the stdio.h header file. I see it. Good. So, all these ones, now operating system things, may not scatter our head. It will be not your ass, So, are you seeing? I want I want us to check where the printf function is located, so that you see it. Let's let's keep on checking. What is this? Type dev. We we'll still come to the uh, come to that. So, you people should be checking out for printf. Good. What do you see? Are you seeing the printf function? X turn int print f. See what is taking in. So you see where the printf is being defined. It's defined inside the header file. So what this preprocessor does, it packs everything inside that header file and brings inside your code. Imagine you need to in you need to like copy all this code and put inside that file. It will make sense. Imagine lines of which we don't scroll. Imagine that you go copy, put. You never code, though, but you don't copy and put. <laughs> so I don't know if you understand. Yeah, uh -huh. good. So that is why that header file is important. You understand, ba? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are many other functions too that we will still use that inside this header file. So now, what do you see here? You see that all those things. Here, did we actually put this is C gang? Was it this is C gang we put? Let's inspect our code. Cut. What did you put here? Word. What did you put here? What are we seeing here? What are we seeing here? So what are we? So you see what I told you that preprocessor will do? It will check, do you have any macro? Yes, it will now replace the macro you put in your code with the actual value. 
So that is what just happened. This is all we, these are actual value. These are actual value. But in our code, these are we put it. Word, pi. But after the preprocessor, it will replace word with the actual value, which is what? This is sigma. It will replace uh, pi with the actual value, which is what? 3.142. So that is the first step of compilation. Because as soon as any place wants to see that uh, this this is the sticker, mm -hmm. what will be is that print F, then we'll open the bracket like this. Yes. Place wants to see. Yes. So, do you guys understand the first stage now? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, now the second stage <laughs> compiling. Now, let's see what this compiling does. The compilation code is the second process of the whole compilation process. Here, the compiler takes the preprocessed pre, uh, pre file as what? Input and converts it to what? Assembly code. The assembly code is a readable form of object code or machine code. Now, after preprocessing, what we preprocessing do? First, the most comment yeah. is useless. Second, it checks. Is there, are there any macro? If there are, it replaces all the macro in your code with the actual value. Right? Yeah. Third, it carries all the things in the header file and bring them into your code. Yeah. Compiling, what will it do? This preprocessing now, it will convert it to assembly code. I, I'm very sure some of you have heard of assembly code. Yes. Assembly code and machine code are the same. The only difference is that assembly code is a human readable form of machine code. Machine code can't read this. But assembly code, you can have an idea of what is happening. You understand? So if you are a hacker or you are somebody down to learn hacking, you want to learn reverse engineering of applications. You need to understand to some extent assembly code because every programming every software that is being written with code eh? no matter how tight the security is if you are recompiling it it will go through assembly code so that is where you can track it down and then eh, 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 what are they calling it you can track it down at that point and from that point you can now hack the app. That's why you have some Android games that hack. Now you enter, you see unlimited coins. That's how they do it. So they reverse engineer the app. And then they reverse engineer it to a point where they now have assembly code. So from that assembly code, that's when they now did what they could. So now, do you see the code? If you remember, for preprocessing, it's GCC flag words, capital letter E. For compile is what? GCC flag, flag capital letter what? F. S. You get it? Good. So, plug it here now. Or is it entry? Yeah. No, this place. Uh -huh. No, that place. Uh -huh. So, do you get it? Now, compile it. It's just pick what you have here. And then convert it to assembly code. And I told you that assembly code is a human readable form of machine code. Machine code is only computer on that. That one, that one, you can't even understand it. Don't worry. Each of these files will view it. You will see. So now, what does it mean? It means if we run this command on our file, it's going to compile it, but to stop at assembly. So let's do that. So now we have GCC flat capital letter S, the name of our file. What do you see they are warning me? You know when we started, I told you that this pie is supposed to be a flute. Yeah. But I'm using... Ah. You know which kind of CVD is sensitive to touch. Oh, you're yeah. <laughs> good. Imagine you're going to present for senior men executives. Executive. You can't go off TV like this. Yeah. So, so you see, he's warning me that this one what do you see? Two has actually it has compiled. Mm -hmm. If it did not compile, what it would have given me is an error. But warning, it has compiled just that it's telling me that I'm not using the appropriate data type for what I have. 
So I'm supposed to use percentage F. Why? That's a floating point number. We talk floating point numbers with points. points. You understand? So it's just warning me, but it has compiled. If you see warning, it has compiled. It's just that it's warning you that if your program don't work, you so expect that may work. Now wait till cause You understand? But I didn't be what we have here is error. It has not compiled. Good. So now let's check. LS. What do you see? You see another program was created. But this time around, with what? Dot yes. S format. So this is compiling format. You know for this pre-processing, it did not create a new file. It didn't just brought out the output for us to see. But for this compiling, it will create, so if I use this flag S, it will create the same name, but with the format of compilation. That's with the format of assembly code. You understand? Now let's check what is here. Let's see what is inside here. So let's enter. You can use for your own. You can use. Have you done it? No, I'm not, I'm not done this particular compiling. Okay, do, do it. The info. So I capital letter S. Okay, capital letter S. And the name of the program. So, do you see? So enter it now. So let me enter inside my. No JSV create file like just terminal. We don't understand it here. If you understand, say no matter. Now look, look at this thing. I mean, mm -hmm. print no. Let's <laughs> let's analyze it together, yes, right? You know, we say this is the human readable form of object code, object code and machine code. What is this dot file? That's name of our file. Of course, this is name of our file. Yes. Dot text. Dot section. Arrow data. Me and no the String. We used the first string. We used this. This is the sequence. From our programming, our way of programming. It. The second string we used is what? I love computer science. The third string we use is what? Percentage D. Remember, for our numbers main what is the name of our function main what is the type of our function is main is a function that's why you're saying main at function okay so so all this i don't really understand it offset 16 6 minus 6 call if you remember we actually called our printf function yeah. How many printf did we use? Three, right? It's supposed to be three, but I'm seeing just two calls here. Calling this call and this call. It's supposed to be three, but I don't know, I'm just having this call and this call. But no, no, we're supposed to have three calls. Was it three? Three calls. Three calls. Hmm? It's two calls. No, it's three, you know? The first time I know computer, this this is Zigang. Mm -hmm. I love computer science. Yeah, it's three. Then that number, yeah, right. the pi. You understand? So it's three printed, but I'm seeing two. But I'm seeing another call here, but it's not printed. It's actually put S. So maybe they used put S for the number. I don't know, but it's supposed to be three, three calls. So that's how they analyze and I saw if you read assembly. Mm -hmm. So you can see other things here. You can see. Funny enough, as strange as this one looks, there's somebody that can analyze everything for you here. You understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, that's for compilation. Now, this is the second step, right? So, the third step, we have assembly. Remember, preprocessing. After preprocessing, what do you have? Compiling, compiling, converting to human readable form of object code or machine code. Now we now have assembly. This is the third step in the compilation process. Here, the assembler takes the assembly code as input, takes assembly code as input, and converts it into machine code. This machine code can also be referenced to as what object code. 
this machine code that is generated by the assembly is a binary form of the assembly code. It's the same thing with the assembly code, but this time around is the assembly code being converted to binary. And you know, binary is all zeros and one that can be directly executed by the computer. Now, question you ask yourself is why is it that it's only zero and one computer understands? Mm -hmm. So we can ask one of us. Even robots, you can make robots. You can make robots understand at a, at a higher level of abstraction. But not see, that English must be converted to binary binary binary. before the, pro the robot can do what it's supposed to do. So why is it like that? I'm throwing the question for you. Why? Yes. Mind you, Inside our program, is even only one number we have, which is the part. The rest are words. Mm. How comes that words will be converted to zero and one? Maybe it's the arrangement of the zeros and the ones on the. Yeah. I gave you an idea last week. ASCII code. I'll still teach you guys next week. We'll do ASCII code before we start the meeting. I showed him how every character in the whole world has a, has a representation in both decimal hexadecimal, octal, and binary. I should mm. So, so far, anything have representation in hexadecimal and octal. It can be converted to binary. So that is what it has to So, now, why do computer understand only zero and one? Very simple. What helps a computer run is called the processor. The processor as a let me not call it a device because it's not a device as a component the coding of a processor only has two switches the on switch and the off switch the on switch represented by zero the, the on represented by one the off represented by zero now manipulation what is happening with the processor is that as the computer process things is a manipulation between on and off that's why you have what we call logical reasoning yes. logical numbers where you have true 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 and true 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 and false 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 and true false false and false false all those ones there you have that's why in anybody that will study electronics uh, electrical electronics engineering you do what you use it what we call logic gates and you know they can get it for a you do in computer good yes you do in computer yes that's true you do what they call logic gates so computer is all about logic that's why as a programmer start, let me operate on logic now yeah. be logical so program is all about being logical in your app it's not all about cramming code and your own mm, it's being logical in your approach <laughs> good so now assembly we have talked about assembly right so now if we convert it to zero and one that's what the processor of our computer we understand the processor of our computer will now run it after running it it will now send it back to us in a way we will understand so that is the goal of programming language the goal of programming language because as you are like this you have to tell your computer to shut down can you tell it to shut down zero and one no you understand but you can tell it to shut down through command you can through terminal, you can give it a command, shut, shut down, you understand? That command you are giving it is in your own way you understand it, your own language. It will be converted to the language computer understand that. Computer, will, what they ask you is 0011012, uh, not to, go ahead, just zero one zero one zero one zero. It's okay, this one to office system, it will shut it down. Then if computer to give you back something, it will not say, ah, it's 0002, mm, 000111. It will convert it back to your own. An object file code is created here. If the C source file is this, then the object code will be this. Remember for the um, compiling dot s for the object code is going to be dot o. So now look at the command to compile it to object code. What do you see? GCC flag. C. C. I see that is small letter, lowercase c. Uh -huh. So now back to our program. Let's now compile it to object file. Um, 
Il est loin. Ok, ok, do LS. And look at it. You do not complete it. There are no dots, C, just dots. Rerun the code again. And then, 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 tab, right? Now, you see, it's just dots. Why? Because you have another dot S here. So do enter the tab again. Then C. Good. That time you just ran. There's no C here. Okay. You know so enter now. So do you see? You see this one can help you do it. So let me do mine. So you see what I'm telling you? Because I have two files of the same name but different format, it will stop here if you press tab. You understand? Yeah. It must stop here because you now have two files, so you now choose which one. So me, because of this kind of uh, this guy install my own terminal, I'll just press tab. It will show me the two. Then pressing tab, I can choose which one. What I want is this C. Enter. What do you see? You see, it still gave me a warning. But just like I told you, warning does not mean it has not compiled. It has compiled. It's just that it's still trying to warn you. If it was error, if you check your own, you see that it gave you warning. It now gave you error. Do you get? If you check that one time that you do not include the dot C properly, it gave you warning, it gave you error. So the error is that it did not compile. But warning. It's so if you get only one, it's compiled. Well, error, it don't compile. So let's check. Let me list ls. So you can see my program, my object code. So let's view it. This is the object code. This is the object code. Good. Good. Even the theme editor I'm using mm -hmm. cannot interpret it accurately. So this is the best interpretation it can give to you. It can give to you. What is this? So can you understand? The only thing you understand here is this. I love computer science. Present HD. This is the gang. So you see why? Do you see that? Excuse me, sir. Okay. Do you see that it even included my version of Ubuntu? You understand? Why? Because machine code, um, machine code, uh, not representation per se, but I will explain it. Like how machine code are generated is based on the architecture of the system. You understand why it's because it's the processor of the system that needs it and different systems have different processors so this one that's why you're seeing it's included my so let me check which vim let's check which vim type the command which vim let me see if you have vim on your system so that we we'll use vim to open the file so that you see what i'm saying So go back to this place. Do V I space hello H then tab dot O that's O dot press O enter good. Mm -hmm. If it's not installed, it's not working. It's not work. Good. Now check my version of Ubuntu and check your version of Ubuntu. Are they the same? This one is what? So you see that it's not the same. 
good so just like i was saying and so just like i was saying this one put into consideration the operating system on your windows if i have drawn this one this command gcc on windows what it will show me here is the version of windows i'm using you understand yeah. so that's why using low level programming is it has an advantage of it can run on any platform because if you build a program it will build the executable that's the main app it will build the main app using the operating system and your system processor so you can code one thing and deploy it across different operating system it will still work in low level language so this is the object code you can see how it is uh -huh. and all that so at least i'm very sure that apart from this this is c you cannot read this one. and just like i say i'm not even sure the editor can accurately interpret it into the zeros and ones that's why i've seen all these kinds of things so so this one so you see how my own looked like in another kind of compiler so that one, this one was showing art art do you see any art here no. so you see i just seen box box that's why i see even the editor cannot accurately you understand but yeah. uh -huh. so linking four so this is the last step linking this is the fourth and last step in the compilation process in a situation where there are multiple source code see files after compiler assembly the linker will link all the multiple objects or machine code into a single executable file another rule the linker does is to link codes from functions used in the c library now this linker has two works in c let's say i want to code calculator if i like i can decide to input the add function we have its own file the subtract function we have its own file the multiply implication function we have its own c file right so once i now do them i will compile all of them to object code so all those object code now i have three object code now addition subtraction multiplication this linker will be the one to bring all these three object code together and then form them as one file which is my calculator that's one then the second thing it does again here is that let's say say another role the linker does that it links code from functions using c library right now if you observe we use printf function and i told you that printf function is inside of what yeah, that header file so what it does is that it will go and pick the recoding of printf function because printf function is like any other function they, they code it it's just that like they standardize it so it will pick it now combine it with your program turn it to an executable what it means by turn it to an executable is that it turns it into a real app i don't know if you understand so you're saying that this new thing what it does like that calculator you have minus plus division and subtraction file with different yes. things and the um object code yes to make it become one file to combine all of them you know we started down to where we did as object code yes. right so now let's say we have addition dot c subtraction dot c multiplication dot c so by the time we use gcc flag c on it you know it will convert all of them to object code so we also have add addition dot o subtraction dot o multiplication dot o so what this linking will do is that it will carry all those addition dot o subtraction dot o multiplication dot o and turn them to a program like this an executable oh, okay. like this that we can run okay so it's not just this it's not just the uh object code and then the executable you understand so for this one just like i say you remember we use printf and printf is found in the header okay. file so it's go and pick the printf in the header file and so link it you understand <coughs> and this is why the linking has advantage if you check the first thing we did you know the functions inside a standard 
uh, input and output. There are much. There are plenty. Yes. But the only one we used inside our program is what printf. So this link will just go and pick just that printf and combine it with the O object code and then form it into an executable. So this linking is the final, 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 final stage. So to link a file, like to go to the node started from one. Now this is a disclaimer. You cannot do stage one. You cannot do stage two without doing stage one. You cannot do stage three without doing stage two and stage one. And you cannot do stage four without doing stage three, stage two and stage one. So if you check that first one with the flag E, it's just that flag E is to tell GCC that stop at stage one. After stage one, stop. Yes, and just like they are doing video, you not everything cut. Maybe you yes, understand. The second one we use was flag capital letter S. That flag capital letter S, you are telling it that okay. okay. When it goes to the second stage, stop. Okay. You understand? The next one we did flag small letter C. You are telling that when it gets to the third stage, stop. Then this last one now, last stage, is one like I tell you, just do everything for me and give me a program. Let me run. You understand? So in that case, you don't need to use any flag, just your GCC. We still talk about other flags that will help you identify errors, but not now because in in ELX you don't just compile; you have to compile and check for every error. Or else, what used to mark will not mark your code way. So now we we'll just do our GCC. So you just do GCC, the name of your program. So now this name of my program. Now once you do this, just like I said, this is a warning. So it does not mean that my code have no run. It has run. It's just a warning. So now if you just do GCC name of your program, let me show you what we have done. It will create by default. It will create a program called a dot out. So to run now, do you remember before we started when I did that ls slash usr slash b if you check all the files i was telling you they are executable which color are they they are they were green so you see this one is which color green it's right there that these are executable so to execute it or to run it is simply dot slash the name a dot out now what do you see this is the c gang i love computer science dash you see, it's giving me this number. Normally, it's supposed to give me that 3.142, but see, it's giving me another number. We'll still talk about this one someday. Uh, you see, the warning it has been giving me. So, you see, but you see the nonsense it's giving me. Mm -hmm. So, now there are instances where I don't want it to give me this one as a default. I want it to give me a name. Maybe I want to name my program something. This one, I can decide to name it. Now, in that case, if I do GCC, I will not stop there. I will not use flag O. What I'm trying to tell it is that compile this for me into a program. Then output it. You know, O, output, yeah. flag O. Output it as this name. So maybe I want to call it my, name my babe, no see this one, Sha. So what I'm saying, compile it into a program I can run. But give it this name. So enter. Now let me let's check. What do you see? So now I can execute it. My yes, I know the data from my system. May your babe see that. I swear she go and waiting there. I imagine say you can't open and you can't see this thing. You say this guy, this guy, it's the bad guy. So do you see? This is the what? I love now check something. You see this one, you see the numbers there. You see that they are different from this number. You see this one is minus two one something something. You see this one is what? Plus one two. So that's why I see you have to be extremely careful. So as a developer that your first language is C or you understand C. 
you find out that even if you are coding another language, you'll be extra careful. In JavaScript, you can be this careless and it will still come out well. See, it's not, it's not like that. Too. It's more careless, you careless like this. Even you, you shock. You shock going to be giving you. See, what 3.14 become. Imagine you build one bigger one. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. So, so this is, so anytime you want to compile your C program, you now do GCC. This is what is happening. All these steps you are seeing. So, so I, before I wanted us to start, it was like, it's better you will understand the compilation mm -hmm. behind it before we start. Because anything we'll be doing, once we program a program, the first thing we'll do is GCC. So, from here, I'll show you how all those methods you are using in Java, they just, in Java, they are just, say, turn on to, they just say, turn everything to lowercase. You just put my name dot lowercase. Boom! You just put that. You just tap. You know, you go press the enter key now. You yeah. just see it. You say, eh, eh. <laughs> 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 they say, don't go down somewhere. 